Hello friends, today I'll be talking to Johnny Emel, art historian, writer and curator. And this is a new gallery, he is part of Bharat Art Space in Gurgaon or Gurugram. And this is the first exhibition, Bharat Makwana and Johnny Emel. And yes, friends, uh, Johnny Emel is now wearing a new hat of a gallerist. Yes, now he is a gallerist. And we'll be talking to him and get to know his very colorful journey and this is unit art fair which he was part of and here with uh, renu modi espas art gallery new delhi and these are the various books which he has written translated edited in malayalam in kerala and let's start this journey with johnny ml stay with art keeper stay with johnny ml yeah hello uh, johnny ml Hello. I'll be talking to Johnny Emil. Uh, he has multiple um, crowns, multiple hats to wear. He's an art historian. He's an art historian, art critic, uh, writer, curator, and now one more hat, new hat he's wearing, that of a gallerist. Yes, he's also a gallerist right now. So, we know about his multiple uh, journeys. There are a lot of journeys. Hai. So let's start with his journey. Like uh, you were not here for a long time, if I'm correct. For more than two years, you were into creative hibernation in Kerala, and suddenly you have reappeared in Delhi, and that also just before the India Art Fair. So what's the secret? What's the mystery? Please tell us. <laughs> yeah, actually, <clears throat> thank you so much. Um, I was actually uh, away from Delhi for the last four years. Right. And uh, yeah, you rightly pointed out that this was a creative hibernation. Mm -hmm. I went for something creative. Okay. Uh, there was a big show happening in Trivandrum, which I was curating. It was called uh, Body. Which year? Uh, that was in 2019. Okay. And uh, also there was uh, this uh, uh, International Film Festival of Kerala mm -hmm. in Trivandrum. Right. So. Once I went to, uh, you know, to do this curatorial practice uh, in Trivandrum, then I found myself, you know, in the midst of a lot of cultural activities. Okay. And I, I thought like, okay, I will, uh, I will see these films and then I go back to Delhi. Mm -hmm. But that somehow didn't happen. Then I was staying there. I, I was staying in the city mm -hmm. and a lot of cultural uh, literary activities were happening and uh, I tried to immerse myself in those activities. Okay. Then came this pandemic mm -hmm. and the pandemic actually changed the whole narrative of our cultural activities. Right. We were confined into the rooms right. and uh, suddenly this uh, Google meets and online exhibition and a lot of uh, talks on online platforms which could be the future of uh, you know art scene mm -hmm. art buying selling showing right. uh, engaging with and uh, so on mm -hmm. but then i had my uh, own kind of reservations regarding the online platform because mm -hmm. Uh, art is something that always gives you sort of uh, objective uh, experience, mm -hmm. object experience. Right. So, object to have this object experience, you have to uh, really see the object, the art object, whatever kind. Mm -hmm. um, then you have to stand in front of it, you have to experience it, you have to see it and understand it. Uh, maybe you have to talk to the artist or talk to the fellow beings, to mm -hmm. your, your fellow beings and so on. So somehow online acti activities were not really taking off. Uh, international museums mm -hmm. and also national me me galleries to certain extent uh, were promoting their activities through online platforms. Yes. But somehow this euphoria that built up around uh, online platforms were, uh, w was not really, really working. Mm -hmm. I was also trying to do something online, but then immediately I realized that that is not uh, my way of doing things. Okay. Then I withdrew myself uh, uh, from the art scene mm -hmm. and I went on uh, studying about art internationally, uh, which is happening internationally. And also I wrote a lot of books in Malayalam. Right. Also I was writing uh, articles in English and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, then okay, that hibernation part is really... Uh, working for me <laughs> and actually I could gather up a lot of uh, energy right uh, many people actually uh, have this uh, 
tendency to become frustrated mm -hmm. and also dejected and uh, depressed during such situations. Right. Uh, I was different in that sense. Like I was okay. I was very happy mm -hmm. to be there. Uh, when uh, the uh, lockdown was relaxed, I used to go to the coffee house, sit with my friends, chat, okay. things like that. I mean, I, don't know, I was not really doing something great there. So you're not worried that way the COVID thing will hamper your creative journey or it will uh, create some blockages? Uh, yeah, I knew that like uh, one day, today or tomorrow, this will eventually, you know, uh, better out mm -hmm. and um, things will be different. But mm -hmm. definitely, I also knew that, like uh, the way uh, Slavoj Sisak and uh, George Agamben, mm -hmm. all these people said, mm -hmm. there will be a different kind of state functioning, different kind of uh, you know uh, state intervention in mm -hmm. the human lives, right. and there will be states of exception, and also there will there will be surveillance state happening and uh, authoritarianism growing, mm -hmm. power gathering. Uh, very forcefully and uh, very strongly around the, uh, you know, administrative centers. Mm -hmm. Political parties becoming stronger, opposition parties becoming weaker, mm -hmm. uh, business uh, in a way getting uh, hyped up, mm -hmm. um, uh, poor people becoming poorer, all these things. You all know. these things, And yeah. all, in all these matters, like the middle class was a sort of surging. Right. Middle class was surviving, middle class was uh, still making a lot of good money. Mm -hmm. Then I found that like it is time to come out of that. And uh, okay. uh, then I thought like, okay, I was, I have been working with uh, Bharat, Mr. Bharat Makwana. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had this intention to start a gallery and uh, related, uh, you know, establishments long time back. Okay. And I was working with him. And uh, once uh, the pandemic was over, he again started like, you know, uh, let's do something. Okay. And he started working towards uh, developing the infrastructure. Okay. And finally, uh, in Gurgaon, actually mm -hmm. now we have Bharat Art Space Gallery. Mm -hmm. And I am a strategic partner, intellectual partner with him. Okay. And... Um, yeah. So yeah. now you're a gallerist. Uh, you can you can you can <laughs> technically call <laughs> me a gallerist. Right. Uh, but at the same time, like I may not be. So what what role you'll be playing there? Like what kind of role you'll be playing as a person as a gallerist? I, will it be only the intellectual part, or you'll be taking care of like also managerial part, uh, the executive part? What kind of roles you'll be playing over there? I think I think all of this together. You know, like mm -hmm. you cannot separate yourself from. Uh, one aspect of a gallery running from the other. Right. Like, I mean, those people who are uh, familiar with the gallery scene, right. they know that, like, uh, as much as intellectual uh, inputs that you need mm -hmm. to run a gallery, mm -hmm. you need financial input as Absolute. well. Absolute. And also, you need uh, reaching out to the clients and, uh, you know, funders and uh, uh, people like that, financiers like that. Right. And you need uh, networking. Right. So all these things uh, may not be going well with uh, uh, the image of an intellectual. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is attributed to me. Right. Definitely, I have been one till so far. Uh, till so far, and I mean, I mean, I will continue to be one. But right. at Absolutely. the same time, the, for the the post-pandemic scenario or the post-boom scenario, mm -hmm. I think like an intellectual could also double up as a person who is, uh, you know, involving in the market positively. Right. And uh, trying to bring about a certain kind of a change uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the in the in the market mm -hmm. and also like uh, market is uh, not just about like uh, buying and selling mm -hmm. or putting works into action or right. auctions um, but also trying to create a uh, mythology I mean contemporary mythology around it so that I mean, uh, maybe 50 years from hence, mm -hmm. 50, 50 years from now or 100 years from now, mm -hmm. like when people of the future look at the cultural production, visual cultural production of our times, right. may have something to grapple with, something to chew and mm -hmm. uh, something to deal with. Mm -hmm. So if we don't create uh, mythologies and stories and histories, mm -hmm. narratives around the visual culture, mm -hmm. uh, we may be a kind of, uh, we may be dubbed as a kind of people who were absolutely dry and we're involving only in buying and selling absolutely. so this is the kind of uh, you want to create you want to create you want to give some visual legacy yeah definitely i mean right? visual, that is why i would say that why our progressives are still mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, uh, still a major market force mm -hmm. the auction houses need the progressives mm -hmm. that is the modern masters mm -hmm. and the galleries the secondary market and the collectors and the funders right. all these people all the dealers all mm -hmm. these people want masters why because they have got wonderful lives 
basically they were connected to human beings mm -hmm. and they were having interesting stories right. maybe they were not rich they were not doing well the way we see them today in terms of the auction charts and the sort right but uh, they were having interesting lives and mm -hmm. they were uh, uh, living lives fully they engaged themselves with people mm -hmm. they created stories perhaps sometimes nasty stories sometimes great stories sometimes interesting stories mm -hmm. sometimes soap stories right i remember raza writing to krishan khanna in in the in the book published by the raza foundation mm -hmm. uh, there's a little correspondence between uh, raza and the krishan khanna mm -hmm. and in that actually uh you can see rasa ka totally uh, continuously complaining to krishan karna that uh, see i am making a house i don't have money you know like uh, please send me some money and so on because uh, okay. krishan karna was a banker mm -hmm. and uh, krishan karna making certain <laughs> excuses for not sending or even after sending like uh, the the continuous insistence uh, on sending more and more money actually mm -hmm. irritating him mm -hmm. not really irritating perhaps like this were friendly banter at the camp right. at that time so these kind of documents now uh, make the progressives legacy so important absolutely and they can whenever they look at a work of art from uh, the progressives or the moderns mm -hmm. they have something to weave around it absolutely so when uh, say for example gaitonde's work is uh, you know parallel be placed in a museum with that of rothko mm -hmm. um, i mean rothko has a legacy and he is a legend in himself right but when you when you see gaitonde along with it and gaitonde also has uh you know interesting uh, stories about him he was silent he asked the people to go to be he didn't want to talk to people mm -hmm. so even the silence became a great story Absolutely. unfortunately what happens to what's happening to our times is that like we are not able to create uh, stories mm -hmm. we are not able to create uh, interesting narratives around uh, artists as individuals right uh, maybe because of the uh, technological uh, advancement of our times mm -hmm. made us uh, and also the economic uh, socio economic uh, political and cultural changes uh, mm -hmm. happened in our times made us uh, you know cocooned in our uh, our um, private 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 right. spaces and you know some, something like that like uh, we became so mechanical and westernized in a sense that we want to suppose if we want to meet a, a friend like for example i want to meet saumin mm -hmm. i just cannot just come walk into your home or in your studio right but i have to make an appointment as right. so maybe like this was not happening during the times during of the progressives time. or 70s or 80s or no. 90s even you know no. late 90s the things changed right so i think like uh, we uh, that is why i insist that there should be mythologies around uh, artists and uh, work of work works of art and Absolutely. Uh, we really need to do uh, something towards it it was a time 2012 when you were part of uh, united art fair mm -hmm. if i'm right yeah and you were the curator basically yeah and that was a mega art fair mm. which happened in delhi probably at uh, pragati maidan yeah and that was a time when you mentioned that uh, one doesn't need the gallery the art gallery yeah to achieve success in the art field now suddenly you are a gallerist yourself 2023 and in delhi again so this uh, dilemma so how do you <laughs> want to explain yeah apparently it may look like a contradiction mm -hmm. um, but it is not really a contradiction if i look back mm -hmm. if i do an introspection and a retrospection right. into what i did in 2012 mm -hmm. 2012 was a particular time when uh, india's uh, art market was mm -hmm. not getting or not feeling the pinch of the Uh, art market collapse mm -hmm. or the market collapse in general mm -hmm. 2008 uh, this international market collapsed mm -hmm. and um, uh, we had a lot of heartburn all over the world right uh, but india's galleries didn't collapse okay. india's galleries were flourishing at that time till 2012 2013 right. india's galleries were flourishing and flourishing in a disproportionate way okay. actually they were making a lot of money at that time mm -hmm. because india was uh, india had the backup at that time you know like uh, i think this was the uh, that was the fag end of uh, manmohan singh's uh, mm -hmm. you know regime and uh, 
there I realized that a lot of artists were not getting enough space in the galleries. The mainstream galleries were ganging up to mm -hmm. promote certain kind of artists and they were all doing very well in the international market, national okay. market and auction houses and so on. Mm -hmm. And also these coteries actually, uh, you know, paves way for creating one kind of art. Mm -hmm. And that one kind of art means one kind of aesthetics promoted by certain kind of people mm -hmm. uh, according to their whims and fancies. That right. was the time. Uh, I thought like I was a kind of one-man army or a revolutionary <laughs> sort, you know, <laughs> like the, those romantic notions. Like, I thought like maybe I can cross the desert without a camel. That was what exactly mm -hmm. that the was expression. Uh, that was uh, yeah. Uh, and the newspapers actually picked up that line. And they highlighted it. I still remember Hindustan Times writing a big article, mm -hmm. uh, taking that as a kind of starting point. Many other online journals were also picking up the same line. Same line. So I decided to invite for more than 500 artists and I gave them space, like as a curatorial director of United Art Fair, I gave them space. Mm -hmm. Thinking that like uh, we can function as a large hub. You know, mm -hmm. there is, is an umbrella organization, umbrella mm -hmm. gallery, and mm -hmm. also we were not averse to uh, to the galleries either. Mm -hmm. We were inviting the uh, uh, galleries at that time, but not many galleries collaborated or cooperated with us at that time. Okay, but it was a success. I mean, except for the starting troubles, the mm -hmm. teething problems were there. Mm -hmm. But it was a success. The first edition of United Art Fair gave a lot of, lot of, uh, uh, you know, hope and uh, you know possibilities to the artists. Right. But somehow the second edition collapsed because I was not heading it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it, it, because I was not heading it, it collapsed. But I had a vision. And I couldn't fulfill that vision with my second or third or fourth editions. Okay. You need to have uh, like at least a few years in your hand right. and also required adequate fund funding mm -hmm. so you can make your vision a reality. But Absolutely. that didn't happen. I am not going into that. Okay. But interestingly, after 13 years, from 2012 to 2023, mm -hmm. uh, things have changed. Like uh, galleries also have realized the, uh, the folly of uh, ganging up. Mm -hmm. They realize the fact that like they need to, they need to be international. They cannot be really national national. Right. And also because of the tip, uh, put, uh, very peculiar political climate, mm -hmm. uh, they have to cater to one particular uh, or a different kind of aesthetics right so that uh, they will not be rubbing uh, you know like uh, wrongly with mm -hmm. the political establishment mm -hmm. so uh, in general our galleries have become uh, positive in certain sense mm -hmm. and they also sort of uh, you know working together and right. working towards right. to bring varied aesthetics mm -hmm. And in that time, at that time, you don't need too many fairs, maybe, but okay. still you have space for one or two fairs more. Right. So how do you balance between having too many fairs or having one or two fairs actually uh, not competing with each other, but at least uh, giving parallels? So that is where I thought like, you know, I could actually head another art fair, but that was not happening immediately. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, why can't I just uh, go for a gallery? And that was exactly the time, I mean, it's not uh, yesterday or day, day before yesterday, it mm -hmm. is like at least four, four years before, like when I was in Kerala, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking, like uh, Bharat Makwana and myself were talking about uh, having uh, certain art establishments, not just a gallery, uh, not just uh, an auction house, not just a fair, mm -hmm. but a good art education center, a good research ah, center, okay. and things like that. Okay, hmm? okay. But then, uh, actually, uh, we we also realized that to start all those things, we need a huge funding, Absolutely. huge backup. And we both of us come from not uh, not from those established uh, families with uh, you know recognizable mm -hmm. uh, surnames and things like that. Right. So what we did, we decided to go for 
uh, a gallery that is Bharat Art Space, mm -hmm. and the Bharat having uh, as a person having almost 25, 30 years of art dealing, he came to the scene quite early. Mm -hmm. So with that experience, uh, he comes to the front from the secondary market. He is coming to the primary market, right? And he has a lot of dreams, and he has a lot of uh, uh, ideas to uh, make these things work, and that is how. I also become uh, now a gallerist, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, maybe I am. Uh, I am <laughs> when I call myself a gal gallerist. I'm a different gallerist. You know, I don't look like a gallerist. Right? <laughs> really. Absolutely don't. <laughs> that is that is the thing which I would like to say. Okay. I like to ask the questions. It might sound funny, but every curator mm -hmm. has his own style. Like every artist mm -hmm. has his own style. Mm -hmm. Her artist ke apna style hota hai. Usi tarah ap har curator ke bhi apna ek style hota hai. They pick up artists, they choose artists mm -hmm. based on their certain uh, parameters, mm -hmm. certain thinking, yeah. their own philosophy. Yeah, yeah. So what's behind the philosophy mm -hmm. of Johnny ML as a curator? Mm -hmm. What inspires you mm -hmm. to, to pick up certain artists yeah. for certain exhibitions? Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether uh, there is a particular uh, Johnny ML style in curat curator curatorial practice or curating as you uh -huh. mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but I could say that like uh, my curatorial ideas were always inspired by the surroundings, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was it is political or social or cultural or historical, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, my readings and my interactions with the people and mm -hmm. also the day-to-day -day affairs that is happening in India in general right. all affect my thinking process and okay. my curatorial ideas used to come mm -hmm. and also I, I I look at a lot of uh, materials mm -hmm. you know materials are an integral part of making art right so I have actually I had done one one uh, one show or an exhibition which is completely based on fiberglass Right. I mean, those works were, I mean, that was called fiberglass. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one uh, landmark project was like uh, uh, video Venice Days at the gallery. Tell us uh, how you pick up uh, artists for your exhibitions. Like, uh, is there any certain guideline you follow? Whether you have to pick up certain young artists or emerging artists or senior artists only? Like, what is the process for you? You know, I, I like all kinds of art, mm -hmm. all kinds of artists. Mm -hmm. I would like to curate, I think, uh, the, the informed art, intelligent art, mm -hmm. not necessarily conceptually, it could be painterly, it could be sculptural, it could be installation, it could be cutting edge, anything. Okay. So I love all kinds of art, I love, uh, except for the naive, naive sort of things, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, uninformed or misinformed, right. unintelligent art. I don't want to do anything with that. Mm -hmm. But when you when you appear or when you take an avatar as an as a gallerist, mm -hmm. then the uh, things are different. Actually, you have to look for the market viability, right. and also you have to build your credibility as a gallerist. Right. Uh, and uh, my present position and the present uh, aim is to build up credibility for Bharat Art Gallery uh, and uh, its activities. Right. Tell me, do you believe that? To be a curator, you have to be trained. Like, uh, as per my knowledge, you don't have any curatorial courses in India in various art colleges. But you are a trained curator from United States or from UK, I believe. So, do you think you need a formal training in curatorship to be a curator? Like, uh, otherwise, uh, every every day, every other day, you are getting someone or else someone other is calling themselves like. Maybe artist too, or maybe curator too, and it's happening all over India. So, what do you think about that? Uh, I did my curatorial practice uh, in creative curating from mm -hmm. Goldsmiths College, uh, London University. Right. And even before I was uh, trained as a curator, I was curating. So mm -hmm. I should not, and I could not say uh, that uh, trained people only should come and uh, curate shows. Uh, untrained people also could. Right. But they need certain kind of idea, mm -hmm. certain kind of uh, professional skills to mm -hmm. do uh, curatorial practices or curatorial shows. Okay. But now, actually, uh, if you have a JNU degree in art history and aesthetics, mm -hmm. you are a curator. <laughs> if yeah. you have been, if you have been writing about art in one of those uh, magazines or uh, you know uh, newspapers, you are a curator. You are a curator. And there is a saying, especially in literature, a failed poet is a, a critic. 
right like that a failed artist is now also a, a curator right but i will not say about uh, that about everyone for example bose krishna majari right. is doing a wonderful job absolutely uh, rias como is doing a wonderful job as a curator they both uh, artists and they are, they are artists, artists and, and they also they curators are, yeah, they, they, they are and uh, sudarshan shetty did a good job there uh, jitish kalla did mm-hmm. so they, i mean there are artists now shubhi rao who is the current right. and a curator so i don't i don't say that like an artist cannot curate curate or other people cannot curate they should and they could only thing is that they should have this uh, informed they should have this informed knowledge they should have this uh, brilliance and uh, a grasp on the materials and uh, also aesthetical as well as uh, a cultural discourse right um, why i kept myself away from the curatorial practice for the last 4 years um is because or was because um in my in my native place that is kerala every other week there was a curated show mm-hmm. uh not one many right. actually artists themselves were coming together and curating so there's a those are communal activities not i not in the kind of religious communal terms but mm-hmm. there's communes they they work as a group they work as a, a, a set of people right. it is a self encouraging self congratulatory and uh, mm, actually uh, nothing comes out of those things okay. and uh, i didn't want to work in such a uh, kind of scenario that is why i abstained from uh, doing curatorial practice curatorial projects uh, during the last 4 years i could say Okay. We know about India Art Fair which happens uh, every year in the month of February in Delhi. And we have Kochi Binale mm. happening in uh, uh, down south and we have many other fairs uh, happening in Mumbai also even in uh, certain parts of Bengal also mm. in Kolkata. Yeah. Do you think we need more art fairs, mm. more art binales mm. in India? Yeah. That will push now in the art mm. to some extent to the you know mm-hmm. contemporary uh, mm-hmm. international art scene mm-hmm. do you think we need mm-hmm. this kind of things i mean uh, there is a saying that the more the merrier mm-hmm. if you have more art fairs and the quality will increase and it will be you know decentralized uh, you know all the people from different parts of uh, india mm-hmm. could enjoy art fairs right uh but another thing is uh, even binales like they say mm. that they, now we have kochi binale mm-hmm. and uh, you can have mumbai binale you can have uh, uh, delhi delhi binale and all those things mm-hmm. but um, uh, when it comes to the proliferation of one kind of a model mm-hmm. it gets uh, there is a prob- possibility of getting it diluted and also the leadership according to as per the leadership change uh there could be uh you know quantitative degradation in art fairs and the binales okay so i think like uh, certain established things could continue the way uh, it is uh, for example like art fair has changed hands the mm-hmm. leadership leadership has changed the or uh, the ownership has changed but still uh, its quality hasn't in some years like there is a kind of a depression and people's participation is less and all i mean as much as i know the current one which is mm-hmm. going to happen in the next week right. 2023 um i believe that there is there is a lot of hope invested in it they say that like there are 75 galleries and most of them are indian galleries right. and uh, no international participation or rather sparse international participation only mm-hmm. uh, but still a lot of hope is riding on india art fair but uh, in that case i would say that if there is a lot of hope happening and there is a positive outlook on in the indian art market mm-hmm. one or two uh, good art fairs coming uh, maybe in the north or in south or any part of india would be better see the location of an art fair or location of a binale mm-hmm. is always determined by the its characteristics of being a contact point or a kind of international hub or a juncture right kochi had the advantage of history which being a port city right and also like this has a multicultural uh, outlook even today mm-hmm. uh, delhi also is the uh, center of our administration right. bombay has the financial is the financial capital right so in that sense calcutta once was the cultural capital uh, but slowly uh, its uh, you know status uh, has been eroding for quite some time mm-hmm. uh, but <clears throat> i would say that uh, such places could be generated provided the 
the surrounding things that means the financial as well as the business circumstances are conducive enough to uh, generate a kind of confidence in investors and also uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, their collectors and uh, uh, you know the the the, the uh, galleries and uh, all the people will go there museum representatives and all these people will go there mm -hmm. plus one more thing i would add we uh, need, we should not uh, have only galleries galleries we need a lot of museums as well right. the success of the western countries and as uh, west as a uh, as a as a, as a, as a uh, single entity if i say mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of museums in the in their cities Absolutely. even in the countryside and in towns they have museums so people have the habit of going going there so organized binales and organized art fairs uh, when they come up people have this hope of seeing something more than the museums mm -hmm. so that museum culture is what that, uh, that what we need to inculcate among the indians that we need to work towards it Okay. And uh, uh, another thing is auction houses. There are now uh, every every gallery has a uh, like aspiration to become an auction house, double pass an auction mm -hmm. house. I don't know whether it is going to uh, generate quality. Maybe it definitely generate a lot of funds for money for them, some financial success for them. Uh, but uh, it could also uh, sort of uh, you know devalue our. whole making of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, valuable aesthetics uh, too much of uh, too many uh, cooks uh, you know spoil the broth that we say if every gallery is turning into an auction house i think there is a problem there is a problem now i am coming to the concluding part of this uh, short journey with johnny ml first thing i would like to ask a short uh, question like which hat you love to wear more being an art critic art curator art historian or a writer now one more add I, it i think like uh, i may gallerist i uh, know uh, i may i may turn into a painter i think like uh, <laughs> nowadays i feel like uh, uh, doing some painting right but i am waiting for the right time to come <laughs> <laughs> got it got it uh tell me one thing uh indian art in 2023 and beyond mm. where do you find it i think like we are going very strong uh -huh. uh, and i see also a collapse in uh, the human figure mm -hmm. if you look at internationally and also in indian art you can see there are no more uh, or hardly you see uh, the human figures you know this in, is in the paintings in the paintings in the paintings and uh, art art is turning more and more into abstraction actually mm -hmm. that right that reflects our times our political cultural times and this de, uh, this collapse of uh, human figure also is actually the other end of the uh, death of photorealism mm -hmm. but if uh, you if you are still trying if some artists are still trying to do photorealism in the way uh, they it used to be during the last 15 years or so mm -hmm. they are bound to fail that is what i feel because okay. uh, human figure has to be now rearticulated mm -hmm. human human figure is in a crisis so now do you think it's good or bad uh, it is bad actually in certain sense like because uh, the the total absence of uh, human figure from art mm -hmm. and the total turning into abstraction mm -hmm. will uh, eventually yeah. result into uh, some kind of bullshitting you know like you have to talk a lot of bullshit mm -hmm. when you actually try to justify a piece of abstract art right i mean definitely there are good abstract works like say raza or gaitonde or ramkumar or akbar padamsi you know masters like mm -hmm. there are good things to talk about their works right but then what happens when <laughs> when you when you see only abstract art what you are going to write about in the, uh, it like in what kind of a terminology what kind right. of a jargon that you are going to build up you mm -hmm. don't have any other jargon than saying some spiritual thing like saying that it shows this the inner power or inner truth or inner space or you know so mm -hmm. limited jargon so limited jargon will limit the uh, criticism so it will limit the criticism mm -hmm. and will limit history writing Mm -hmm. art history writing right uh, that means like you will have to uh, create very false myths <laughs> right you know so that is the only danger i see otherwise uh, we are going strong are going strong yeah so 
Thank you so much for talking to Artkeeper and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you friends for watching this video. Stay with Artkeeper. Subscribe and share with your friends and loved ones. Please support Artkeeper. I need your support. Thank you so much.